what it is that the purpose of a fight camp is or the purpose of nutrition is for a fight camp. Nine times out of ten, when I ask people what is the purpose of a fight camp, they kind of ask me like, well, they kind of look at me like, you know, duh, like it's to get better at fighting. But what I see is people trying to make weight. For a lot of people, fight camp isn't about getting better at fighting. To a lot of people, fight camp is actually about making that weight, okay? With us, we have a lot different perspective on nutrition than the average person that you guys see in the magazines, nutritionists, dietitians. Reason being is because most people, dietitians and nutritionists, they're working with people that are trying to have aesthetic goals or specific weight goals. But the thing about it is, with boxing, you have weight goals, but you also have to be able to perform. Now, the laws of thermodynamics, guys, is a very simple thing. Energy in versus energy out. What you guys are gonna hear most of the time is to drop calories. And I guarantee you, if I ask any fighter or trainer here, that's the number one thing they do when they start a fight camp. They start pulling calories out. So the question I said, I wanna ask you guys some questions. If you guys ask yourself this, calorie is a measurement of heat and a measurement of energy, right? If a calorie is a measurement of energy and I pull calories away during a fight camp, what am I pulling? Energy, yes, I'm pulling energy away. So guys, if you look at your fighter like a vehicle, right? Top grade vehicle, you're getting this person ready for a fight. So you're getting a vehicle ready by fueling it up less. You're gonna drive the car more, you're gonna fuel it up less, and you're gonna expect performance to increase. It's never gonna happen. The only way to do that is to actually put a bigger engine in the car. Increase performance, that means that energy output is exceeded then you actually start losing that weight. If you start pulling those calories during that time, uh, like during a fight camp, that's when you guys have those negative uh, results. And I've seen it time and time again where a fighter will have a bad day of training and they lose two pounds and they feel that's like a good day, okay? Like I said, I'm gonna be short and brief. I'm just kind of going over some real quick things that, I, that I've seen. Another big thing that I also see, guys, fight week prep. A lot of people just kind of do things like hearsay and it's rapid weight loss, okay? There is a very specific thing about the body. It's designed to survive. If I go out into the desert, the first thing my body's going to do is start sweating. Why? There's a stimulus that's created. What's that stimulus? Heat. My body senses that, and to protect itself, it starts sweating to cool itself down. Well, the thing is, you put enough heat to something, well, guess what happens? It's a triage effect. With that triage effect, my brain notices, hey, there's not a lot of water coming back in. So what happens is it starts looking at what's, what's more important, dehydration or overheating, okay? People do this, and again, they expect performance to increase. My goal isn't to circumvent or stop this process. Our job is to actually prepare the body for this process, okay? Now, number one, we talked a little bit about preparing for a fight camp, okay? Preparing for the week of the fight camp or preparing for the week of the, the actual weigh-ins. A lot of people, they know how to make that scale drop. They either cut salt, they cut carbs. If I told you guys right now, carbs is your primary source of fuel while you're boxing. Your weight will go down when you guys do this. You guys' weight will go down if I pull carbs. Because a lot of people don't know, one gram of carbohydrate holds on to three grams of water. So if I stop taking in those carbs, I don't, even, I don't even lose the carbohydrates, but I lose the water that's attached to that. Problem is, is that's my, my muscle's number one source of fuel during that activity that I'm doing. Again, boxing. If I'm not able to perform well in the gym, guess what I'm not gonna do? I'm not gonna be able to burn those calories. If I'm not able to burn those calories, guess what happens to my weight? Doesn't go down. You know what happens to my performance? It goes down. So you have a stagnant weight, you have decreased performance, and you have a very, very hungry boxer, okay? Our job at Lockhart and Leeds is to make sure not only that these boxers perform at their best, but they have longevity in their careers. I myself was a fighter for 10 years. At the time, I was George the Fighter. Now I'm George the Father, George the Business Order, George the Friend, George the Marine. And looking past that, making sure that health is, is continued not only during the career, but after the career is our number one, number one uh, goal that's how we got into this and why we got into this. We started in the Marine Corps. That's what we did in the Marine Corps. We, again, in the Marine Corps, you have performance standards, you have weight cuts there, not weight cuts, there, but uh, weight standards. And uh, you have to make a specific weight, but you also have to perform, just like combat sports. 
So with that, um, like I said, I won't be quick, fast, there's so much more I want to go over, but uh, I know you guys have many more uh, important speakers coming up here. Like, this is crazy. I can't believe this, this is the, the act I had to follow. Um, does anybody have any questions pertaining to training, uh, rapid weight loss, performance enhancing, weight loss, anything whatsoever? Yes, uh, I would like to ask you, I'm, I'm here right here. Oh. Can you describe uh, some dangerous methods of losing weight? Absolutely. So fighters usually do what they are told by the trainer or manager or, or friend. And maybe they don't know it's dangerous. Can you please describe some of these methods that are dangerous to the body? 100%. So, um, like I said, we've been in the game for a long time, so I've seen, I've seen everything, guys. Um, one of them, you know, basically we understand that for people to do a rapid weight loss, there's only a few things that can come out of the body. Salt, carbohydrates, and water. Now, obviously, our body's 65 to 70 percent water. The leaner you are, the more water you have. So what people do is like, well, if I make this individual sweat, then I'm going to get that weight off. How do we make somebody sweat? You put them in a bath, you put them in a sauna, um, or you put them in a, a, a track suit and you have them go run miles on end, okay? With that being said, if you look at the way that this is done, number one, I very rarely met people actually take the temperature of a bath, okay? If I put somebody in a bath at 112, 113 degrees, I'm actually cooking my fighter. I'm not, not saying that as a joke, you're literally cooking your fighter. Now, the purpose, like I said, we have something called the stimulus and then you're gonna have a response to that stimulus, all right? If I go out in the desert, I have that heat, that creates the stimulus. I only need to put uh, somebody in enough predicament that they start sweating. Where do I start sweating? 104 degrees. Guess what 104 degrees is? It's a jacuzzi. You can have them chilling in a jacuzzi. That creates that, that actual response. I don't have to try and put these people in this, in, in this uh, predicament for long periods of time. Number one, number two, they don't time it. They try and have the fighter stay there as long as possible, okay? Obviously, you guys are working with fighters. They're gonna go until they can't go anymore. It's a, a very dangerous effect that they have. And the thing is, is once that stimulus is created, there's no need for them to be doing that anymore. If I go into a sauna and I start sweating, I come out, I just have that person lie down, elevate their legs, and uh, stay heated just enough where I keep that sweat going. Again, I don't need to be cooking this individual. People don't check the, the vital signs, they don't check the heart rate, they don't check, you know, basically, if my heart rate goes up more than 20 points or my, my blood pressure drops more than 20 points, that individual is gonna pass out. And I'm sure that we've all heard horror stories of fighters that are passing out, hitting their head on things. It's just unnecessary because there wasn't somebody there to overlook this and actually see what needs to be done or how it needs to be done and they didn't prep the individual for this. One thing I want everybody to know is that our bodies don't have a brain. If your body had a brain, there would be no reason like, for you to hold on to body fat. For example, you guys can go to the store anytime you want. If your body knew that, there would be no reason to hold on to that body fat. There's negative feedback signals. Our job at Lockhart Elite is to get rid of those negative feedback signals to work with the body, for the body, so we get you to your goal and then get you properly hydrated and replenished. Most fighters, they do, after they weigh in, they think that's it, this, it's over, boom. It's ready to fight and they just start carving up. They start eating carbs. The thing is, your body can only, only hold so many carbs. That's calculated by us. For example, muscle tissue, one kilogram of muscle tissue holds on to 13 grams of glycogen. I need to know exactly how much muscle tissue you have to find out how much glycogen your body can hold. Then I need to find out how much you burn on a daily basis, and then I need to find out how, from the time you went in to the time that you fight, how many meals do I need to get into this individual? So if I need to ingest 500 grams of carbohydrates to replenish my fiber, it's not as easy as you would think if I'm only able to get in five meals because then you gotta look at something else. My body can only synthesize one gram of carbohydrate per minute. So if I'm eat, having them eat 100 grams of carbs per meal, they're gonna be bloated. And I'm sure there's a lot of fighters out here that's had this happen before. You guys weigh in, you guys are bloated, you're hungry, but you can't eat anymore because you're so bloated, right? Then you have an effect on the actual rehydration process. Because you're so bloated, you can't drink the water. So it's a, it's, a, it's a negative cycle, but if we do everything right and we work with the body, like I said, not only are you, you properly rehydrated, you 
You guys make weight properly. You're not doing these dangerous things of sitting in saunas for a long period of time. You're not checking the temperature of the water. Um, and then you're getting your fighter fighting optimally. With us, in a lot of stages, we've actually worked with fighters that have fought each other. It's actually very common in our field because we don't have a dog in a fight. Our goal is to make you the best version of yourself when you guys get in that ring. And then, like I said, increase the longevity of that career and after that as well. Right. So the, the, the question is, the people that we work with, do we cater that to everybody? Absolutely. Not every, everybody has a different sleep schedule. Everybody has a different workout schedule. Everybody has different food acclimations and things of that nature, different dietary needs. For example, if I have somebody that wakes up at 10 o'clock in the morning and trains at 11 o'clock in the morning, do they have breakfast before they work out? Do we wait till, until they're done working out? That's our job. We have to make sure that we understand this is what is going to be most beneficial for the performance and health of that fighter. Number one. Number two, if I have a fighter that's working out twice a day, and I got a fighter that's working out once a day, again, I got I to gotta accommodate for that. I don't know if you guys have ever been to like a title boxing. This is probably a bad thing to use, but it's like it's like a, a place in America that's kind of for um, people trying to lose weight. They have this guaranteed thing. They say you're gonna lose a thousand calories in one hour. These are amateur. When I say amateurs, they're not amateur boxers. They're just amateur people. Like they're just in there trying to lose weight, and they're able to lose a thousand calories in one hour. Imagine a boxer. You guys think about it. A professional fighter. How many calories do you think they burn in a, in a given session? Now, ask yourselves as boxers, what do you guys ingest when you're done working out? I guarantee you, you guys are burning over a thousand calories and most guys will have a banana and a scoop of protein. Number one, banana's got 25 grams of carbs. You need closer to 250, okay, just for that workout. At the end of the week, they sit there and they're like, ah, I am exhausted. Reason being is you're not fueling yourself like a car. With that, to answer your question, we are very, very catered extremely to each fighter's size, weight. Everything needs to be looked at. Everything needs to be checked out. What foods work well with the body, and uh, you know how well their body floats. Do they sweat a lot? Do they not sweat a lot? So yeah, it's very, very, very tailored for those individuals. Yes, sir. So his question is: Do we do uh, you know? Obviously, we do take age into effect. But if you guys, if you guys find it's crazy. Uh, they just have new studies out that our metabolism does not actually slow down until you're 65, okay? What happens is we slow down, but our metabolism does not slow down, okay? We do a lot less as we, uh, as we age, but our metabolism doesn't. Now, with that being said, if I have a guy that's been taking good care of themselves, uh, they, I, I've had fighters that are on the later end of their career needing more calories because they are more efficient at actually digesting the foods. Um, unfortunately, some people are born with really good genetics and they eat, they're like, hey man, I can eat whatever I want, and they look shredded. What they don't understand is that that's messing up their gut biome, the way that their body can actually absorb food. Just because you can eat it and look lean doesn't mean that that's uh, beneficial for your body's ability to, to break down. So we do take that into consideration, but we don't make the assumption from it. Sir, I, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> so, if you look at yourself like this is, and this is a mindset like, there's the psychology of nutrition and there's a the physiology of nutrition. Okay, as a coach myself, the job is not hard to get people to lose weight, especially uh, you know regular people because it's like I tell them eat grilled chicken, lettuce, and avocado. See you in six months. My job as a coach is to get them to do that, to see why they're doing that. And I try and get people to look like you were a Lamborghini, right? How many here, if I gave you guys a Lamborghini, would put crappy fuel in it, right? And here's the thought process that a lot of people have. They're like, man, you know, I've been training real good. I, you know, I deserve a cheat thing. I deserve junk food. I deserve, I just fought. I deserve alcohol. That's like driving a Lambo and be like, man, this bad boy is driving perfectly. Let's go put some crappy fuel in it. Doesn't make any sense whatsoever. You are a Lambo. You are you are literally that is your money maker. So alcohol has so many I mean so many negative factors on it. You know besides you know health is 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 a big one. But in terms of doing it long term uh, between actual fight camps, I try and have people abs literally abstain from it completely after your career's over. Absolutely, man. Hey, you had to celebrate an amazing career. I know that's not that's not a given for most people, but I try and, and create the, the bar so high, so if they do have a couple of drinks, then they're like, you know what, I kind of went over and did it.
biggest thing I, I tell you is creating habits early. You know what I'm saying? Like doing everything the same exact way, finding the good weight. Everybody feels that if they go from a very high weight to a very low weight, that they're going to become more proficient. Now it's just you got faster people in that division. You know what I'm saying? It's not that easy. The one thing I would look is have somebody that is knowledgeable in this area and take a look at that individual and say, are they still growing? You know, are they still filling out? What's their reach? What's their length? And then finding that exact weight and then having that person tailored to that from the beginning to the end of their career. Because again, everything's about consistency. Everybody knows here you go into, uh, you, you know, you start boxing, you have, to, you have to throw a jab a million times, a million times before you become proficient at the jab. The same thing with nutrition. For some reason, people eat a grilled chicken breast and expect to have a six pack. It's consistency and simplicity. You have to do it day in, day out. But I would say bring, uh, bringing those habits in at, at the amateur level, sir, is just as important as a, as a pro. And the people that I've worked with that have done that, we brought up, um, they, they've seen very successful careers and very long careers. Obviously, people know that there are you know people that go to the extremes and, like you said, drop in more than one weight class. Um, a lot of you know, I like to deal with numbers. If you're 3% dehydrated, that equates to up to about a 30% decrease in performance. Okay, and I'm just gonna start, just, that's just the beginning. Now, if you look at it like that, if you're going in at 70%, you're going in against an animal at 70%, how dangerous is that right off the rip? Okay, now, on another note, uh, when it comes to rehydrating, the one thing that we've seen is people are super proficient with the actual technique of things, but when it comes to the hydration, you'll see people with, you know, Electrolyte drinks like um, uh, Pedialyte, it's, 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 made for, it's made for babies, you know what I'm saying? It's not specific to those individuals. There's a lot of people that still uh, incorporate the IVs um, you know, in the amateur ranks and things of that nature. That's 9,000 milligrams of sodium that you're just throwing into your body. What we need to do is we need to find out, number one, how much you, you lost during that period of time. How do we uh, quickly introduce that to, to your body? Rehydration is the first thing we look like by uh, look at before people get off uh, get off the stage. So when you see people when they get off the stage, first thing they do they drink in a freaking media light and then they start eating. We don't have them eat for at least two hours before uh, or after the actual weigh-ins. Why? Because it takes that it takes time. Your body's kind of like an upside down filter. When you're dehydrated, we put everything back in the way it comes out. If it's upside down filter and I start plugging it with food, I'm not going to be able to hydrate properly. We do take, and we, we have, uh, we've worked with doctors on this, we've come up with a very specific formula. It's different for everybody, it's different for every single weight cut, but you need to have a, a, a good amount, a perfect amount of sodium. You need to have a perfect amount of potassium. You need to have a perfect amount of magnesium, calcium. A lot of people don't realize calcium makes your muscles contract, magnesium makes your muscles relax. I know there's a lot of boxers in here that you guys have those days where you're popping. Everything felt fast, everything felt good, and then, for some reason, you gas out, and if you can feel like you pop, you have an excess amount of calcium. You, you have an excess amount of magnesium, not enough calcium in your body. You guys feel like you go, go forever, but you don't have that pop, right? Well, the thing is, is there are a lot of people that talk about the blood-brain barrier in, in the head that not, not necessarily with the weight cuts, you know, um, there's not actually enough water being lost in, in that short period of time. But, with the, like I said, the lack of rehydration, uh, they have shown different shapes of the brain. It's not the blood brain barrier, but it's different shapes of the actual brain. People getting hit, obviously going out a lot faster. I think that there's a lot more that we can look into with TBI uh, as a Marine. That's something that we, we've, we've definitely studied for a long period. Um, you know, taking a hit from, from boxers and, and repeatedly at a low performance with an un uh, rehydrated uh, brainstem. Is, uh, is something that definitely you, you need to make sure that you guys have on point. And I have, honestly, I've never actually worked with somebody for the first time and had that happen. Um, what you got, a lot of people, last thing on this, the last thing, a lot of people are like, what weight should I get to? If you don't weigh the same exact amount that you weighed in at when you guys show up, you're either ate too much or you didn't drink too much or didn't drink enough. So. You know what I'm saying? So you want to be that exact weight. That tells me that you're right on point. When you wake up with the exact same weight that you guys woke up training uh, every single day, that's when you know you're properly rehydrated. That, that, that tells you also that um, everything's good to go. Last thing too, 
for fighters out here. A lot of people think that if you pee quickly right after you guys get off the uh, off the scale, that's a good thing. That's not. We want to be holding on to that water. It should be taking some time for that stuff to be processed in our system. So, like I said, there's a lot of stuff that we've learned along the way. There's a lot of formulas that we have. Um, I won't go over the exact formula for everything. I want to bore everybody. Uh, if anybody does afterwards, I'm more than happy to go over everything with you guys. Uh, but that is the biggest issue that we face. It's the most important thing. That's what we're most well known for. This will never happen. We don't do. We do not promote this. But we've had people lose 30 pounds in three days and have them properly rehydrated, pass a hydration test, and actually win uh, championship fights. So. We didn't choose that. Those guys, we get the call, guys. We'll always, we'll always answer that call because like, we know that if we're not there to do it, you guys are gonna try to do it on your own. I'd rather be there and be that safety precaution. But that's something. The whole purpose of this is to prevent that. So we have enough people out here that are educated, have access to us, so we can we can get ahead of the curve before that happens. George, thank you so very much. Uh, I would like to ask uh, Chico Lopez to please come to the stage and present you with a Medal of Honor for all the hard work for saving lives into our sport and saving the safety of the sport.